This summer, Amtrak discounted its USA Rail Pass to just $300, and I decided to snag one after a tip from my sister. Thanks, Susanna. Here's how it works. The USA Rail Pass gives you 10 segments of travel between two stations on the Amtrak system. Each individual train you take counts as a segment, so if you're going from Lancaster to Boston, the Keystone to Philadelphia and the Northeast Regional to New England are two different segments. Since a segment can be anything from New Haven to Hartford to Emeryville to Chicago, I used my own money to book seats on the shortest rides of my adventure to conserve segments, putting the rail pass to work on longer runs. Now there are a few caveats to the rail pass. Segments can't be used on international trains to Canada, certain throughway routes, and the Acela Express, and only a limited number of Amtrak seats per train are given to rail pass users. Finally, once you use the first segment of the pass, the remaining ones must be used within the next month or so. So with those ground rules, I cobbled together the American Odyssey of a lifetime. We were in the Seattle area when I purchased the pass, so just a couple days later my sister and I hopped on board the eastbound Empire Builder. The train was late, but we enjoyed a beautiful golden hour climb through the Cascades, and the next morning we were treated to the sights of Glacier National Park. Unfortunately, from there to Chicago, there was barely anything exciting to see. For a state that literally has the word mountain in its name, most of Montana is really flat. From Chicago, we flew to Baltimore and drove home to Lancaster. But the next morning, after a keystone from Lancaster, I boarded Segment 2. I took the Northeast Regional up to the Boston area, where I was a groomsman in a friend's wedding. I had built a tiny model railroad to display at the wedding reception, and while it was a big hit at the event, I did have to carry it to and from Boston on the train. After the wedding, I met up with Miles from the channel Miles in Transit. We filmed a crazy scavenger hunt, which you can check out on his channel, or on my Rail Pass Adventure playlist. A few days of visiting with friends later, it was on to Segment 3. Back on the Northeast Regional, I headed south to New Haven. This stop wasn't without its problems. Amtrak's Red Cap service was, apparently, unable to store my luggage, meaning I had to carry my backpack, my suitcase, and the model railroad all around the city. Still, I enjoyed my time walking around Yale, and I visited the Shoreline Trolley Museum, where I got to explore the museum and ride an actual streetcar. This done, I headed back to the station for Segment 4. This was probably the least exciting train of the adventure, as it just took me back to Philadelphia, where I caught a Keystone home to drop off the model railroad. But two days later, I was back in Philadelphia, ready for more adventures, starting with some trolleys and an underwhelming turkey steak sandwich. With this done, it was time for Segment 5. I boarded the Crescent at 30th Street Station, and we flew down the Northeast Corridor until Washington, D.C., where we switched to diesel power and continued at a more leisurely pace into Virginia. Passing through Charlotte overnight and Atlanta in the early morning, we soon reached the Deep South and crossed into Central Time. The rest of the day was spent meandering through dense forests and small towns, before finally crossing the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway into New Orleans. New Orleans was fun, with streetcars, jazz, and yummy local eats. I explored here for two days, then took a very circuitous greyhound to Dallas. There were exactly two reasons I visited Dallas, transit and barbecue, and once I'd experienced both, it was off to Austin, where after riding a lime scooter around town, I boarded Segment 6. Possibly the only exception to the rail pass's one train per segment rule is the Texas Eagles through cars to the Sunset Limited, which are transferred between the two trains in San Antonio and technically count as a single train in Amtrak's booking system. I had a long enough layover in San Antonio to see the Alamo, and throughout the next day, we crossed the southwestern desert, passing through El Paso in the southern part of New Mexico, before arriving in Tucson at Golden Hour. There was enough time here for me to ride the city's modern streetcar, then it was back on the train to Maricopa, where my friend Kira and her family picked me up and took me to Phoenix. It would be several days before I used another segment, as my next few days were spent exploring Phoenix, Scottsdale, Saguaro National Park, and Tucson, followed by a Flix bus to San Diego, transit to the southern border, and an ABC bus to Ensenada, where I visited with some friends for a few days. But after a convoluted adventure getting across the border, I was ready for Segment 7. In general, Amtrak's long-distance trains have the most memorable routes and views, but among these titans, one corridor train holds its own, namely the Pacific Surfliner, which hugs the California coast for most of its route between San Diego and Los Angeles. Riding this train during golden hour is truly a surreal experience, especially if you make a playlist of synthwave to go along with it. Los Angeles itself turned out to be less surreal. 
while I got to see downtown, Hollywood, Little Ethiopia, and Santa Monica, the city was so incredibly sprawly that the day and a half I had given myself to see it was simply not enough, especially relying as I was on public transportation. All too soon, it was time to jump on segment number eight. I boarded the Southwest Chief and fell asleep winding through the hills of Southern California. The next day began in the Arizona desert, but as the hours wore on, we passed into the highlands of New Mexico, sweeping grasslands that I had no idea even existed. Climbing through Raton Pass, we passed another chief running several hours late. This ended up being a bit of foreshadowing, as the next morning we found ourselves stuck in Kansas City for half a day due to a delayed crew change or something of that sort. Kansas City had plenty for me to do, however, including riding the streetcar downtown, visiting the World War I memorial, and finding the street that divided Kansas City, Missouri from Kansas City, Kansas. Several hours later, we pulled into Chicago, where I tried my first Portillo's hot dog and rode along the longest subway platform in North America. I spent most of the next day exploring Chicago, stopping at each of its four commuter rail terminals, riding the L, passing through Millennium Park in the city's cultural center, trying my first Chicago-style deep dish pizza, and checking out the former head house of Dearborn Station, now a business complex. As evening fell, I boarded the South Shore Line, a unique interurban line that took me into Indiana, running in the streets of Michigan City for part of its journey. This ended in South Bend, where a kind family drove me to the Amtrak station. Having a lot of time to kill, I got tacos for dinner, watched a glorious sunset, and boarded Segment 9. I fell asleep on the Capitol Limited, woke up briefly in Cleveland, and then woke up in Pittsburgh to find that our train was two hours late. I only had five minutes to change to my final train, but somehow I made the connection to segment number 10. From Pittsburgh, we rose into the Appalachians, rounded Horseshoe Curve, descended to the Susquehanna, and flew along the final stretch from Harrisburg at 110 miles per hour, before coming to a stop in Lancaster. Stepping off in my home city, I reflected back on my adventures. After a year of barely any travel, I had crossed the United States by train multiple times, seeing so much more of the country I called home than I ever had before, all the while using my favorite mode of transportation. If you would like to watch more of my adventures, I have a whole playlist of my different videos that I filmed during the trip. And if you want to take a trip like this yourself, Amtrak's USA Rail Pass is sold year-round. It's just normally $500, not $300. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe. I have a lot more great content coming out in the near future. Take care.